Okay. Uh, I'm a friend of Joe Biden. Let me, uh, <laughs> uh, before we start, I would like to congratulate the press corps for holding the embargo. Uh, I had a lot of conversations, some more this morning, and, uh, no, seriously, it's, uh, we knew how complex this story was, and particularly for those of you who are, are here all the time, uh, it just wouldn't have been possible to try to get anybody to understand this without really taking the time to go through it. So I appreciate the fact you gave us your time and uh, honored it uh, in particular. So anyway, that's it. So let's get to it. Can you reiterate what this is actually going to cost the average computer on a daily basis, those numbers? Well, next year, uh, fares for the average rider will go up either 50 cents or a dollar, basically, <laughs> on a one-way ticket. For most of our riders, they were, their fare will either go up 50 cents or a dollar. Yeah. 50, 75, and a dollar. In, oh, between, sorry, yeah. in between 50 and a dollar, depending on your zone. The further out zones will be a dollar. Marty, would you address the fact that, and we, will, we looked at the pictures and the presentation was good, but Ten years from now, people are going to have newer trains, but the trains are going to look an awful lot like what they're riding on now. And so, in other words, people might say, well, what am I getting for this? Yeah, I'm going to get a cleaner ride. I'm going to get doors that don't jam in the snow. But, you know, they, they see pictures of these things that travel on magnets in Europe and stuff like that. And they're saying, how come we're not getting anything that just really is whiz-bang stuff? Well, those are, you're talking about billions and billions and billions of dollars try to put in something like a bullet train, uh, which you wouldn't really need for commuter service anyway, because the commuter trains stop every so often. But in other words, amenities. And, and well, the, the, you know, we haven't ordered the cars yet, but uh, you're going to have more comfortable seating. You're going to have uh, better lighting, better everything about these, the new cars will be better. Uh, you can go out to uh, uh, the, the Nippon Shario plant and see what they're manufacturing now. They look very much like, you know, real, real cars haven't really changed in, in a long time. If Norm were here, he can tell you that. But it's going to be more comfortable. It'll be quieter. The air conditioning and heating will be more reliable. There will be electrical outlets. We will have Wi-Fi over this period of time sooner rather than later. So it will be a better ride. But the real... Um, the real thing that has to be kept in mind, if we do not do this, the ride is going to go in the opposite direction. There are going to be more outages, less reliable service, uh, less comfortable seating, less reliable heating and air conditioning. Remember, the underlying uh, message that we were given is a state of good repair, at least keeping in fine shape what we've had. Uh, you're talking about a whole other level of capital investment to have some different kind of system. And no, no, there's no commuter railroad that's in the country that I know of that's proposing anything beyond that. What do you predict your riders' reaction will be to this? If they look at 10 years and see 68 percent, what will their reaction be? Well, there may be an immediate reaction of concern, uh, but I really, uh, you know, I've been involved in public life for a long time. And I respect the public. I've interacted on a personal basis with many, many average folks. And what I have found is that if you give people the information, if you level with them, if you try to get them to understand what we here who are trying to run the system have come to understand, people will accept it. They may not be entirely happy, uh, but uh, I expect in the long run, uh, once people accept and digest this information, and all of the information we've talked about today is going to, is on our website. Uh, we have a special edition of our newsletter that will be on the trains, if not later today, hopefully in the next day or two, with a lot of this detail. I think people will come to understand and appreciate it. And what I really expect is that most people will say, whether I like it or not, at least this Metro Board is telling us the truth. And that is very important in public life. Hey, Don, can, you, could, can I ask you a question? Sure. Um, and you, you may need to slide, slide over here. Yeah. 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 So maybe it's just the anomaly of the way the presentation took place today with PTC being the number one item out of the gate. To what extent did, did this $400 million price tag for PTC drive the bus on this thing? Or, I mean, as far as the need for the fare increase and everything else, I mean, is that the elephant in the room right now? No, the, 
No, clearly it's not the elephant in the room on the whole total project because the whole total project is $2.4 billion. PTC, we said, was going to be right around $400 million based on industry costs. But the, the reason we put PTC number one, it's a federally mandated legislation that we have to comply with. So we can't turn our head to that and say we need cars more than PTC. So out of the two items, PTC was there, and of these costs, $275 million of the $2.4 billion is for PTC. Now, does that, since it's mandated for December 31st of next year, does it have to be paid by then? It, it's not that it has to be paid by then, but what you have to do is you have to be in a position as we get this equipment and start putting the, the things together on the trains. So you have to have that funded, and that's what we're doing with this. Again, we're this is a long-term plan. It's a 10-year plan we're talking about. So as we go through this and the operating cost, we look at what's going to be 1% per year, so we factored that into the into the equation for it. But that was the reason why we had PTC in there. Don, 54% of the fare increase is paying for your in, your increase in inflation, cost of living, operating costs. Actually, only a small amount of that fare increase is going towards this rolling stock in PTC. So, what is it, it, it's as if you are equating? It's as if you are saying our costs go up three percent a year. So therefore, we have to increase fares 3% a year, but how do we know that amounts to the same amount of money? What is the, how much revenue is generated by a 3% fare increase and how much is needed for a 3% cost of living increase? How do we know you're not giving yourself a windfall? We're not giving ourselves a windfall and if we took the average fare increase, it's 2.75 would give you close to about an $8 million revenue generator. So that's to just kind of give you an idea where you're at when you have a 2.75 percent fare increase, it would generate around eight million dollars. Well, the best answer to that, Roz, is that we release the budget documents which show a balanced budget. We're taking in only as much as we need to meet our expenses, both operating and capital going forward. The numbers well, are clear. Unless okay, you think so we how much add, is the cost of living? How, how much is the three percent? 